Hello Plant Community, thanks for tuning into this channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Pam and for those of you that keep coming back to join me on my planty adventures, thank you so much. So I have, I thought was a quick one, but it's going to be a long one, but I hope it's going to be an interesting one. Um, so you may want to get something to drink um, because I'm just going to share with you my small plants in my collection. And what I mean by small plants is more or less small planters. So I wanted to share with you the plants that I have in my collection that's at least in a four inch and below. And you guys, when I was gathering the plants to show you, I was overwhelmed because I really did not realize how many plants I've actually had that was in small pots. And um, I have a good size right here, but this, what I'm about to show you guys is still not my entire collection because I figured if I was to show you the entire collection, then excuse me, this video would be way longer than need be. I don't really want to lose you guys interest but if you're interested in seeing my collection please stay till the end I would appreciate it but I'm gonna try to go as quickly as possible now some of these plants also is maybe um, propagations as well so um, and then you know I didn't want to show some that may be like duplicates or maybe duplicate looking I don't know but yeah let's just jump into it I'm rambling on now so really quick now, first one I wanted to show you guys um, is my Trandoscantia Nanook. I have it in this little, this was a candle, by the way, you guys. I drilled a hole in the bottom of it when I used up the candle. But I love the way that the pot looked. I just didn't, I mean, the candle um, container looked. I didn't want to throw it away, so I repurposed it. But this is a very beautiful specimen. Um, you know, I do plan on having it filled out even more here, but yeah, it's kind of scraggly looking, but you know, I could chop it a little bit, cut it back some, but you know, it's for another time. So, the Trandoscantia Nanook. I have, and this I've, I've already showed you, but this is a propagation really quick of my Begonia Maculata. Um, I really like the fact that I did put it in this perlite, but one thing that I am noticing, you guys, I don't know if you can actually see it on camera, but it is like, um, I guess like green or developing algae. And if you can see, it's really fi a fine root system. I might just leave it as is, but I may have to actually wind up taking it out. And I don't think I thought the process completely through about this because now I'm figuring, okay, how can I get this plant out without jeopardizing the roots? So um, I'm not sure, but it's growing nicely. It gave me this leaf right here. And it is another grow, growth point that's coming out. So this is very beautiful. I love it. My next one is my Pothos uh, Pearl and Jade. Now I have all three varieties. I have the Enjoy as well as the Manjula. And you can pretty much tell that this is the Pearl and Jade. You want to think about pearls. That's what helps me remember it. You think about pearls, white pearls, what are they? They're all white. And that's usually what you see with the pearls and jade. The, the white portion of the leaf, the majority of it is white with very subtle light variegation in it. Whereas the Enjoy will have more variegation in the white portion of the leaves. And of course the Manjula would have is the is the shape of the leaf more wavy leaf so that's how I remember which is which but I love it I have it hanging um, I moved it from one window and now I have it actually hanging here on this wall right here and it tends to love it I gave it some water yesterday and it perked right back up this thing was like drooping real bad but it's very beautiful and I'm so glad I have it part of my collection my next one is also another Pothos and this is the um, one that I love is my Snow Queen. Is that what it is? Snow Queen? Is that the right name? Whereas, look at this, you guys. And I'm excited because it's just starting to trail. So I know that when the growing season comes, even more um, trails is going to develop. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. Another plant that I keep in my sunroom. I really wouldn't take it out of this room because, you know, with Snow Queens, it, it's by it being so white, you really do need a lot of ample sunlight or light in general for to promote the growth as well as maintain 
the health of this plant, but I would love it. My next one is actually a small bird, um, small propagation that I believe is taking, and that's just of the um, Peperomia Hope. When I was moving my the mother plant, I had, um, you know, it drops the leaves. So I, a lot of leaves have dropped one time when I was moving the plant. And instead of me throwing it away, I just decided to plop it into the um, soil. And I believe it's taking because I tugged on it earlier and it's, it's hard for me to pull it out. I've had it in here for a couple of months now. So hopefully it'll start shooting out and growing some come this growing season. If not, it's still pretty out wheat. And besides, I have the mother plant as well, so it's no biggie with this one. My next one, plant hazard, is my Hoya Sunrise, which is doing very well, you guys. Um, this is actually in a two-inch pot, planter rather. And um, I haven't had it for a year yet, but since I've had it, it has extended somewhat in its uh, stem here so and it's also pushed out this vi these vines the stems right here so I'm super duper excited and I noticed that baby leaves are trying to come out so I cannot wait till actually when summer or spring hit maybe I'll try to see if I can get this to actually do some sun stressing uh, which the sunrise is known for very beautiful I'm glad I have it as part of my collection I have another, gotta be careful, <laughs> I have another Hoya here, um, this is the Hoya and Cressida Albo Mar Marginata, the variegated version you guys, I have the all green one which is a bigger specimen of this, but guys look at the creaminess on this plant and this is the new leaf you guys which is very beautiful I had a leaf when I first brought this plant it was an all white leaf um, very beautiful but of course you know um, it took a hit because it was all white but I just love this and I can't wait for it to actually start the tendrils to start really expand and then I can actually get this on a trellis because I think this would be very beautiful very stunning and this is also in a two inch uh, pot as well I love it it's very beautiful and I'm not quite sure. Y'all comment below. Let me know if this particular plant, is, would this be considered a, a rare plant? I really don't know. I don't keep track of that stuff. I usually just buy plants that speak to me. Um, I don't care about what's, what's hyped or who wants it or how many people are after it. Oh my, one of my large plants fell completely and hit my window over here. So that's what that noise is. It startled the shh out of me, but I'm together. So as we all say, the show must go on, right? So let me move along. <laughs> okay, right here I have another Hoya. This is my Hoya, um, what is this? Guys, y'all know the name of this Hoya. I'm so sorry. I actually had a brain freeze and I don't know why give me a second guys my plants about to fall on the floor I can't have that okay guys I'm back sorry about that so let me go back um, just real quick this Hoya this is actually a propagation here it's the Hoya macrophala <laughs> I don't know, I had a complete brain freeze with this plant, but this is also a cutting from the mother plant that I had, which is growing beautifully as well. The leaves feel slightly thin, and the leaves also look very wrinkled. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, which tells me I need to give this plant a drink. So I'll do that after this video. I have another for you, you guys. There's other kind of plants I'm just going, I guess, around the Hoyas. My Australis Lisa. I'm really surprised how well this plant is growing, um, especially in the winter season. Um, but I guess I can give credit to the sand sea light that I do have here because it sits behind here. And I mean, it is just, it's just growing nonstop. Very beautiful plant, brought it in a four inch planter and it was flush with the pot, just grew out, it's very beautiful. and. 
you know, look at the little leaves is always coming in that pink and I just love that variegation. I just can't get enough of it. This is another plant that I can't wait to actually get up on the trellis. And look, you guys, look at the root system, roots growing out of the pot. But you know, I'm not gonna pot this up because you know, uh, they love their roots being like crammed in. So next one, is my jade plant you guys that I love so much it's my Cressula jade this is a very beautiful plant I really love the succulent leaves the thick like stems and I really can't wait I've had this plant only only a year yeah only a year and um I haven't had any issues you know I let it completely dry out of course with the big stems but I really can't wait for it to actually bush out and get and become a fuller taller plant um, you know I would have to probably um, chop some of it off to actually give it the look that I really want I have to figure it out I'm not sure but the cool part about it is you can literally just take one of the leaves off and plop it into the dirt and one of my leaves actually fell off Look at this, another one. Look at that. Crazy, right? I think when I be watering it, some of the water goes down, and I guess the roots is just looking for the water. But look, you guys, I don't even know. There's, I put a leaf in here, and a whole stem shot up from, from the leaf. Those roots. Healthy roots. So it's liking it. But I do have to notice there's some water in here, so I'm going to have to put this to the side and remember to pour that out so my next one is my smaller one you you've already seen uh, me show my monstera collection and um, excuse me my monstera collection and this is the small one that I have that's in uh, the four inch pot it's just starting to kind of like grow and take off the leaves do not look as firm as they should be because it did need a drink and I just recently watered this probably not too long ago before I started doing this video so it's going to take some time before the leaves actually perk back up and get firm but a very beautiful plant um, I'm so glad I have actually two of them growing um, in different situations just to see which one does better but the Peru for you and I have another Hoya this is my Hoya, what's this, which one is this? This is my Callista Fowler. It's so pretty. The Vein Nation in the, y'all like the pot by the way? I designed it myself, but um, the leaves on here, I mean I just cannot get away with the Vein Nation and the light green of the leaves. The dark Vein Nation is very beautiful. I've had it for a few months now. It's been under my Sansy light. It hasn't given me any problems. It hasn't grown any, but it has not given me any problems as well. So, you know, I'll take it if the if the if there's no fallen leaves or anything like that. I definitely will take it, but it's a beautiful plant. This is one of the plants that I had on my wish list last year, and I was just glad that I had an opportunity to actually cross it off. My next one... Is a skin dapsis, and it's my skin dapsis. Um, which one is this? This is the exotica. And guys, okay, this is another one that needed a drink, so the leaves haven't not flattened out yet. I've already watered it; it's just need time for it to flatten out. But when it does, guys, look at that! Oh my God, it is just gorgeous. I love skin dapsis. But it's just really been taken off. And this is where it gets like a little gap right here. So I don't know if I'll cut that just to promote growth or not. Mm, I had to think about it. But I really like the way that it's hanging. Uh, but this plant is... My God. It is just beautiful, beautiful specimen. Glad I have it part of my collection. And y'all let me know if y'all have any of these plants in y'all collection as well. If they've been growing good in your conditions or, um, you know, how long you've had it as part of your collection. My next one, I'm, I'm not sure of the actual name of this. But this is some type of um, aloe plant. And 
if y'all know the name of this one in particular can y'all comment below let me know exactly what it is but what really drew me to this plant you guys if the camera is picking it up is the subtle color in the tips you have like orange color and then it's like a light yellow color cream and then it's green tips here can y'all see that and I think the sunlight really brings it because I had it sitting inside my home but I wanted to maintain this beautiful color margins and my god you guys it's very beautiful and I love plants that's like unique in structure and shape and look check it out this is another uh, planter that I made and I think y'all may have seen me talk about this too one time before but anyway guys this is a beautiful plant I saw it at um I think at Home Depot and this was the only one that they had and I had to grab it because I've never seen one quite like this with the tips like this it's so beautiful and just size too didn't cost a lot of money I think it was under ten dollars or something very beautiful deal and a beautiful plant now let's see now this plant of course I had to show it again because I really am proud of it it is really growing especially now um, and this growing um, it's growing now I you know it took a while for it to finally start taking off but now it is taking off and that's my ficus ruby the baby one that I do have I just think this is cute you know if this of course you know you want it to grow but if it stayed like this size forever it really would be adorable in this pot uh, who can deny the beautifulness of it um, and you know I love my red colors and red hues and shades and look at that just so beautiful and the water markings on this plant is very stunning there's just two in the pot it's just very cute very dainty I have it sitting here in my sunroom where it's getting all this nice light um, and it tends to love it so my next one another skin dapsis if I could pick it up without hurting and this will be my skin dapsis um, what's this the silvery Ann um, and this is the one, yeah, this is the one with the silver tips. And what I have noticed this plant is before, I love all my skin um, the, the The silver tips on the plant is not really pronounced on this plant, but I don't care. It is growing funky and wild and it looks real cute in this face um, planter, so I can't really get mad at it. <laughs> Let's see. Isn't that cute? But it's really growing out tremendously and it's not even getting a whole lot of light I'm quite sure if I was to probably increase the light more of the silver tips probably would show on this plant but like I said I'm not mad at it I love it it looks great here and let's see it also has a little bit of just a little bit of roots growing out of there nothing fancy but it's pretty cool all right my next plant I got this from CVS because I think somebody actually said that they found it at CVS and I can't think of the name of this cactus. Is it a cactus? Is it a cuddly cactus? I had to get it because I've been wanting one of these for a long time. Now this is actually a, it's a spineless, child friendly, pet friendly um cactus so this is if you are a lover of cactus but you have pets and babies this would be the way to go where you can protect all your babies including the plant now i'm not sure you guys i needed i wanted to look into this but if y'all know is this happen you know why is it spineless like this is it is it some form of a tissue culture type thing or what or is it just naturally habitated to be as such I'm not too sure about this I don't have that much information on it but if y'all have some insight or some knowledge on this can you share below exactly um, your thoughts on this particular cactus but I really do like it I couldn't believe it they had it at CVS of all places um, but when I saw it I said I had to grab it because I knew it wasn't gonna last long and I was right because when I went back they were all gone so I'm glad I got it when I did my next one is a Hoya i to be careful with this because I have it in this macrame. I'm not taking it out because of the funky way it is growing. Give me a second, guys. I'm sorry. 
Okay. So this is my Hoya Diptera. Guys, I... Okay, first of all, I love it because it's definitely different from what you normally would see a Hoya to be, which traditionally would have some form of veination with it, as well as crinkles or dimples or something in regards to their leaves. But this one is just a plain... The average person would say, okay, a plain green leaf but I just I love the leaf the feel of it is so thick feeling and leathery like I just I mean I actually could feel on it all day long so like <laughs> I don't know but it's so beautiful you guys and you know I've had it for a short period of time but this thing has been growing all these tendrils right here was not here when I first got the plant this one included and it's just been shooting out and just been growing literally like a weed and I mean, oh man, it's just, I don't know what to say about it. I, I don't know, like, okay, this leaf yellowed, but it's so hard and firm. I love that about Hoyas. I mean, you just can't go wrong with a Hoya. You can let them dry out, you know, and get, if they get beautiful sun stress, this would be a beautiful plant if it is. If you do get into sun stress, I just brought it in here not too long ago, a couple of months, and it tends to love it. So I can't. I'm excited to see what springtime will bring for this plant. And let me put it down. Oh, it's always a plant has it when I be sharing my plants, you guys. But okay, so we're almost around the corner. Okay, this one is my Hoya Polynura. You know, I've already talked to you guys about this. You saw me unbox this. I had it only for a couple of months now. Um, of course, you know, it hasn't done any growing for me, which is fine. You know, I'm very patient with it. And also, too, I don't even have this plant in here, which I'm surprised that I don't. I have it actually sitting in my dining room. And it's getting um, some light from my Sansi light. So I don't know if I should bring it in here in the growing season. I don't know because of the way the leaves are. But man, oh man, the shape of these leaves is just so unique. You know, it's exciting to see different structure, leaves, and types in your plant collection. It really can get a conversation going. Y'all feel that way? Because I do. Um, Alright, so I have this one which is another plant that I love a lot. Love so much. And this is my philodendron. This is the silver strike, you guys. I unboxed this plant with you. So I've had it for some time now. Um, I might have had it for a year. I believe I have. But guys, look at that. That creaminess is just... Uh, I mean, it really has been growing. It's definitely trailed. And I have it sitting on my shelf in my bedroom. So it's not getting, it's getting enough light where it's doing all of this and I'm able to get the colors and variegation in it. But it's not like that sharp of a light. And also too, I turn my lamp on at night to have an LED light. So I think that also helps with supplementing the light as well. But this plant is gorgeous. Um, at one point in time, I believe the Silver Strike, it was hard to find and um, kind of pricey. But now, it's the price has come down tremendously, where it's now very affordable. So if you don't have this plant, you can actually, you know, search and probably find it almost anywhere. I mean, maybe anywhere online, that is. <laughs> okay, so my next one. Let's see. I think this is the last for you. Yeah. I didn't want to be like hoying y'all to death, especially if Hoya is not y'all thing. So, but you know, it's my thing. So I kind of wanted to share with you. So I hope it is your thing, if that makes sense. <laughs> but this is my Hoya Numorlarioides. Oh, that's a mouthful, man. I'm telling you. But I got it as a small specimen. It still is a small specimen. But I really do love it in the small makeshift trellis. And I have it in this very pretty little pot. I just love how fuzzy the leaves are. Um, I've been having some issues with this plant though. Um, it's been drying out and some of the leaves have been falling. Um, maybe I'm underwatering this plant. It's just that I do prefer it to let it dry out. So maybe I'm letting it dry out a little bit too long. 
Um, if y'all have any information on this plant, please comment and share below. Um, I would love to know if I am doing something wrong in regards to this Hoya. Um, so yeah, the Numillarioides. Very beautiful plant. We're coming down the home stretch, you guys. If you're in here still with me, thank you so much. Now, real quick, my skin dabs is another one. This is actually um, a propagation that I did do um, of the sterling silver skin dapses. I have the mother plant in my bedroom up on a macrame hanger. So, you know, of course, I wasn't even going to attempt trying to take that down to show you. Plus, it's also in a bigger size pot. But this was a cutting that I took last year in the summertime or springtime. I can't remember, but it was definitely in the growing season. Um, because it was looking a little leggy and I said let me just cut it and so I just plopped it rooted it and plopped it and it's giving me all this new growth right here guys look at that leaf oh my god the silver is just strikingly beautiful isn't it I mean it really is and I have it in this clear pot it's a three inch pot but look at the roots check out the root system <laughs> it's just it's just reaching out, but I'm going to leave it in here as long as possible, but this is beautiful. They also have, these are the two new leaves that just opened not too long ago, and then it has this little leaf right here that's trying to unfurl. I just like the way that it's just, it's funky a little bit in the style and how it is growing. So, you know, I don't know. Some people say it is a slow grower. It hasn't been um, fast, but it has not not been showing me some form of new growth. So I don't know if that's a lighting issue. Maybe um, skin dabs is this one needs to be put in a little bit more light. But beautiful nonetheless. This one, because I just got this plant. Uh, I have not had this plant for a month, I don't think. Um, and I never showed this to y'all, I don't believe. But this was something that I actually got from going to Walmart. I couldn't believe it. Um, I couldn't believe that I mean, this one magical day at Walmart, they actually had plants in there. But they had plants at the worst possible time. I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, y'all had plants in here? How dare y'all, especially when I was on a budget. And they had a good variety, good selection. I've never seen that at a Walmart in my area. I was completely shocked. Like, what is going on? But anyway, I was able to get this one I just I love dark leaves so this is a pilea um, is this the dark mystery one yeah and I know that pilea because I have a pilea friendship plant um, where most of the leaves is practically brand new because you know trying to maintain the water of the leaves is challenging um, so I knew I was going to have that issue with this one and I do have a, a little bit of crispiness of the tips I guess the good part about it being black is you really can't tell from looking at it from the naked eye. Now I have it actually in this self-watering um, pot vessel too, which I figured, okay, this plant cannot go wrong if I put it in here. That's pretty cool. It's something I got off of Amazon um, in different sizes, by the way. So you just put the water in the vessel right here and it just, you know, sops it up. Plus you get to see when the water is low. So I need to put some more water in here to maintain the moisture. And I'm touching the soil right now. It is pretty moist. So it could go a day or two without any more water. Um, but I really love the dark leaves. I don't know if I'll be able to keep or maintain this plant. It didn't cost a lot. So if I lose it, I lose it. It will be sad, but I think I paid like, this was like a 3.98 or or 4.98, five bucks for this plant to say the least my confetti syngonium you guys look I put it in this pot I love pots you know people pick pots to tell a story to tell a theme and I don't really have no rhyme or reason with my pot selections you know some of them is just brought because it's the ones that speak to me um, some pots I'm just actually looking around some pots are like things that I actually decorated myself so it's a form of self-expression um, so I guess my story, if I had to tell a story in my planters, my pots, is, is carefree. Being yourself, expressing yourself, anything that brings joy. I think that's the story that I'm trying to tell. And I just said that to share this cute little planter 
It's little cute. It's, I think it's fun. You know, when I look at it, I think it's giddy. I think it's childlike. And to have a confetti, which it, it just it just really goes with the theme that I'm trying to say. It's like child and a party and all of that. But this plant is gorgeous, you guys. And it's just been growing. Look at that. And, I mean, that subtle pink. You know, sometimes you don't have to go for the sought after hot price billion dollar plants with the pink. You could just get these more affordable ones. And it's just so beautiful. And I just can't wait for it to really fill out. Um, but I'm satisfied with the look of it. I, like I said, I just I just feel happy. I get joy just from looking at the the uh, I can't talk. The planter with the pot. <laughs> my next one is my string of nickels. I've been okay. This plant, you guys, I got it last year. This plant was on my wish list. It took me a long time to finally bite the bullet and said, just go ahead and buy it. Because at first I was going to say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to get it because it kind of like remind me a little bit of the uh, Peperomia Hope except for with the string of nickels is flat whereas the peperomia hope um they have round leaves but it's kind of curved a little bit so um but this was always on my wish list it's something about these round leaves and succulent like it's just beautiful it has not grown for me at all i've had it for a few months but you know also too i brought it right before we were starting to dip out of the growing season and into fall so um, you know, my expectations is not high with this plant. I'm just glad that it's not giving me any issues and that I'm able to at least maintain um, the structure of this plant. But if I can get this thing to grow as lusciously as my Peperomia hope, that would just bring me so much joy. Um, so yeah, I pretty much let it completely dry out. I, and then I wait then some too because the leaves are so thick. And sometimes I let the leaves tell me if I'm able to push them or whatever, or bend them or if they're pliable, then I know, okay, it's time to give it a drink. So I'm, I'm feeling it now, and it doesn't seem like it's ready to give a drink. I try to be extremely careful not to overwater this one because I do know that, hey, it is a, like a succulent-like type. <laughs> okay. Now, we're at the, almost the last one. This one right here is one of my pride and joys, my little baby, um, that I'm kind of just, Taking this, taking my time with it and just enjoying the growth, you know, almost like having your firstborn child and you just try to be there and enjoy their changes of when they first start walking, talking, all those things. And that's what I feel like I'm capturing with this plant. And anyway, this is the Philodendron uh, White Princess. I got it as a very small uh, specimen, as you can see, and it still is pretty small. But what I have noticed, you guys, is one thing for sure is even though it is a small specimen, I have multiple, if you can see, multiple growth points all throughout the plant. And I have it sitting directly in front of my sandy light. Now, I have in the course of um, actually um, caring for this plant, I've lost some of the leaves at the lower part of the leaves, and that's okay. Um, I'm just really loving how well the white, the variegation is coming through. So once this plant finally starts getting from out of the baby stage and it jumps into like a teenage, um, young adult stage, I do believe this variegation will be absolutely beautiful because I'm looking at the stems. You look at the stem right here, you see that white? That's how you can tell when the leaf and things is going to be really variegated if the stem itself is some form of variegation as well. But I love it have it in this cauldron like pot and it's sitting directly in front of a sandy light because I want to make sure that since the leaves are like these half moon beautiful leaves right here that it maintains that and uh, yeah I'm not going to move it from this spot unless it starts declining in some way now my I have a last plant yay I guess some of you guys may say finally to the end um, but I saved this plant on purpose for last because I am so proud of this plant. You may have watched my Maranta video where I shared my Marantas. I think I did do this in the video and I shared it and I said, you know, I'm not liking this Maranta Lucanora and I wanted to cut it and I think I did cut it 
and that had to be like a month ago and the good part about marantas you guys is they root very quickly and very very well the root system is very well so what i did was i actually um had it down to just two leaves i believe and then one big leaf just started to grow out of it and the cuts that I the cuttings that I did I checked and within weeks probably like maybe two three weeks tops the roots were significantly long enough where I actually was able to put it back into the planter and so now I want to show you guys exactly what it looks like and I'm really loving the result so and here it is what a comeback she's making right and she's actually flowered for me which is crazy like why are you flowering and it's supposed to be winter and you're not supposed to be talking but yet you're talking and what's going on so like what's going on with it and it also has um some growth points like this one is another leaf that's trying to come out and i really love marantas how their leaves come out like flutes little flutes here's another growth point right here um and this leaf right here is a new leaf that's actually came out as well but um the leaf is just so beautiful i love that that bare print look how dark it is and this leaf was just so huge i don't know what happened but you know i'm just glad that it's trying to make a comeback so i had it in the pot and you know i made a joke from one of my videos about that i will survive so now i guess this plant kind of like deserved the right to be in here because it's really telling me, hey, I will survive. So, you know, y'all can share below. Let me know if y'all have any um, happy endings to some of your plants that you've tried to rescue, fix, and it kind of like actually worked in your favor. So this pretty much wraps up the video. It's my last plant. If y'all have any of these plants and the ones that you're feeling, please share below and let me know. I'll enjoy hearing from you. But keep in mind, you guys, as always, if you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planty things, definitely subscribe, share with your friends and tell them to subscribe too. Let them know, hey, this is where it's at because, you know, we have fun times and cool conversations, right? <laughs> at least I try to make it that way. I don't know. But anyway, enjoy your day wherever you are in the world, you guys. And until next time, much love. Bye.